Good morning, crypto Twitter is missing. Crypto spreading crypto without you showing this benefit. So to my generation, shout out to all my people. Gen Z needs to be included. It's really that simple. We are savage, amazed, possessed. Making money at the same time, spread peace. I feel empty if you don't include Gen Z. Better change the world, so y'all better get ready. This in crypto, I'm never backing down. I got a wax account. You used to say it. So many NFTs, I think I lost count And I'm only getting started, yeah, I'm barely off the ground NFT crypto, you cannot stop me My hands are made from diamonds, your hands fall like over got me Never be the boss of me, big boys out of need When I say I'm sexy, that's just me, talking all this day Crypto, yum yum, fall by the place I wanna see the more, we gotta go through some space Leave this world without a trace, they pay for it every day Cause we partners in the crypto Hey everyone, welcome back to the Miss Teen Crypto Show. This is a zesty Wednesday morning special. And today's zesty guest is the one and only Leia Helpburn. Welcome to the show, girl. Hey, it's good to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. It feels kind of weird being in the uh, the interviewee seat, but I, I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> I'll see how it goes. You're chilling, Leia. I, I know you deserve a break from being the interviewer. So, you know, <laughs> we're going to vibe today. And thank you for taking the time to come on. I just want to take a moment and say that you're really a role model for me and, you know, other women in the community alike. And I really look up to you. I really love your content and I loved your initiative. And, you know, one of the reasons I, you know, really wanted to keep going with this is because I saw people like you doing it. So thank you for that. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I think this uh, industry is one of the best places to work. Um, I think especially um, for, well, I guess we're not really the same generation, which is strange. Um, you're Gen Z, I'm a millennial, but for <laughs> our, we're very close in age. So, you know, our, our generation really, um, you know, it, it's such an opportunity. It's just one of the best places to work. I think we have it incredibly lucky, um, you know, compared to our parents and our grandparents. I feel like we're just at the beginning of something incredible. Um, and it's always good to be early, so. Always, I, I totally agree. And, you know, we really are starting a revolution and, you know, we're really digitizing our money and the way we do things. And I'm just so happy that, you know, we get to be a part of this amazing space. And for everyone watching, shout out to everyone in the chat. If you guys see this QR code right here, scan it, get a free NFT. I'll be putting more up throughout the show and hit that like and subscribe. If you guys are liking the show, share it out. So let's just jump right in, Leia. What were you doing and who were you essentially before crypto? So I think, okay, so my, my internet's coming out a bit. I don't know if it's you or if it's me. Oh, I'm um, me. So is, is it you? Can you hear me fine? Yes, I can hear you. You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, but I have, I've not cut out, correct? No, you're all good. Okay, so... Um, sorry about that. So who were you before, you know, crypto? How, what were you doing? Did you have a career before crypto? Yeah, I, I did, um, which is strange. Um, so I worked <laughs> as a professional journalist, actually, um, and I did a lot. So I studied journalism at university um, when I was 18, 19, 20, um, and then I jumped straight into it. And I worked for a local London television channel, um, just doing, you know, I basically I wanted to be a correspondent. That's what I wanted. I wanted to be the person there in the field um, with bombs going off behind them, basically. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and yeah, that was that was the goal. I always wanted to like talk about things that mattered. Um, and so I worked for a London news channel and then I moved on and I worked for a news channel in Malta and then I left there. And then I ended up working for um, the Chinese China's Global Television Network, also known as CGTN. So I worked as a finance and business correspondent, and I was based out of Paris. Uh, but it was a super cool job. We um, they flew me everywhere because it was basically providing America and China um, the Europe Euro the European perspective on everything that's going on. Um, you know, whether it's like trade wars, whether it's um, terrorist attacks. 
Um, so I, I don't know if you know, but there was also the whole um, Gilets Jaunes or the yellow vest protesters in Paris. Um, so I covered all of that. Um, I covered riots in Barcelona. So I, I flew to Spain, that was bloody nuts. Um, <laughs> so I covered some riots. Yeah, it was insane. I was working from like five in the morning until midnight, mainly because I was probably pretty terrible at my job. So I had to like get up extra early and get, <laughs> get everything done. But, re but realistically, like I was working from like seven until like 11 at night, which was just nuts. Um, so yeah, but basically I was, I was working for the man, you know, like I was working for someone and I was like fulfilling somebody else's dream. And, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just, uh, how do they put it? Trading dollars for hours. I don't think that's a smart way to, to be. So that's what I used to do. And now I kind of, I still do what I always wanted, you know, talking about things that matter, um, presenting, I always wanted to present and like be a voice about important things. Um, but I do it in a far more relaxed and uh, a way which is more in line with me, basically. That's amazing. I love how you really kept with your vision and pursued it. What made you want to get into news and newscasting in the first place, I guess? That's a funny question. I actually have a direct answer. Uh, <laughs> I remember I was in school and I was doing like a careers day thing and I was talking to some to a careers person or whatever. And I was sort of saying like, I like politics and I like speaking, what should I do? And they were like, have you tried broadcast journalism? So I was like, hmm, I'll look into that. And it kind of went from there. I mean, ultimately I like to speak, you know, I really enjoy talking with people, you know, that's why I want to do all these podcasts. That's why I have a podcast. Um, and then I also, like I said, really care about important things. And I really think that Bitcoin, crypto, this entire industry is very important. And actually in some ways it's more important than the traditional world mainly because the traditional world, it's set in its ways. There is nothing you can do. There is, there's really nothing you can do to like uh, hinder policy, affect policy. You can, but you can't. Whereas like we're in an industry where everything is growing and developing and changing and we can add um, our opinion. We can help shape the future basically because it's just so new and malleable. Wow, that's great. 100%. This space is amazing for just finding your way and sharing your opinions and finding information from other people. And when did, you know, you find crypto? How did you find Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? So, like I said, I was working for that London news channel and um, basically they wouldn't give me the, uh, the promotion that I wanted. So I wanted to be on screen. Like I wanted to be there a man has just been stabbed behind me. You know, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a lot of stabbings in London. So that's what I wanted to do. And I basically turned around to my boss and I was like, so I'm going to be an on-screen journalist, news reporter. Uh, would you like to help me get there in my career and give me that promotion? He was having none of it. Um, so he wouldn't give me the promotion. And so I was looking for other jobs. And then I came across um, a job in Malta to be, um, uh, to be, uh, just a, a presenter, a journalist in the cryptocurrency industry. So it was actually like the world's first TV, crypto TV news outlet called Blocks Live TV um, in Malta. So I stayed there for a year um, and that's kind of how I got into it. But then I left to do the Chinese thing, but then I came back because I preferred it. That's great. I love how you just came in with a crypto company and just started broadcasting. And yes. <laughs> what, what made you think or say, okay, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, like this is it. What, what made it click for you? It's a good question. Cause I'm not sure at what point it happened. So I was working in the industry for perhaps a year before I even owned anything. Well, I did own, I bought like 40 pounds of Bitcoin and XRP, um, back in 2018, but it, it, it doesn't mean anything you know, buy, buying 40 pounds is nothing that's not skin in the game like that's just like um i'm trying something out because i'm reporting on it um but i'm not sure at what that moment was i then started obviously working full-time getting paid in bitcoin um so then obviously i held more but um i don't know what that moment was um i just i'm very political um and so it, it's my I, I have strong political views and so it's really my political views which drive my interest in bitcoin mainly um you know you could you could say if we have to put labels on it i'm a libertarian but really i'm somebody who believes in freedom freedom before everything um human rights you know like lockdowns are totally against human rights 
um, you know, mandatory vaccines are a violation of human rights. You know, so like the, the ideas that Bitcoin instills, which is leave me the hell alone, is what I believe in, you know, like don't touch my money. It's none of your business. I am sovereign. I don't put it in, you know, like, I don't want to rely, I don't need to rely on anyone in life. Like, I just want to rely on myself because I trust myself. So it's kind of like, that is who I am anyway. And it was just like the perfect click, you know, like it was the perfect combination, me and Bitcoin. It just became one because it's just, I don't need to rely on an exchange. I don't need to rely on, you know, I need to rely on a company. I don't need to rely on, you know, I just, as long as I can rely on me, then I'm fine in life. And so it was just like the perfect combination, if that makes any sense. 100% makes sense. You're independent. You wanted a currency or something that, a value that represents your independence. Yeah. And then I think, you know, th this is kind of for everyone. Like I was already really aware of this before the whole year that we've had and the whole 18 months that we've had with everything going on. I was already aware of, uh, you know, the potential um, tyranny that can come from a government, right? Like, I think it was, I think it was Ben Shapiro who, who said, he was talking about like gun rights and stuff like that. He was talking about like, if you don't fear your government, you are naive. And so like, you can sort of get that and you can hear that, but it's not until they lock you in your homes until you're just like, oh shit. Now you feel, now you feel like, you know, the, you feel the government's pressure, you know, CBDCs, they're not going to be any different. For me, like, it, it's all just part of the same thing. Um, and so really this year really made me want to be more sovereign. I mean, if you think about inflation, we've seen, I know you've seen crazy inflation in the US. We've also seen the highest um, increase in inflation throughout August in the UK, the highest in the last 24 years. Um, and, you know, the fact that a government can literally devalue your hard-earned money so i'd be a lot more you know like you know there's all i don't know if you know but there's all these different like colored pills like obviously in relation to the matrix right so you're like orange pilled or red pilled or whatever i'd be like black pilled if it wasn't for bitcoin like i'd be i'd be like i'd have no hope because of how much um control the government has over our lives if it wasn't for bitcoin and all of the people in this cryptocurrency movement who are pushing for sovereignty and you know individual rights and individual freedom so yeah it's just a perfect mesh <laughs> and i heard you say before you were getting paid in bitcoin right from yeah i get paid entirely in in bitcoin um which is really cool. Except what was really annoying is because like when I first started working in the space, Bitcoin was, and I was getting paid, Bitcoin was around like uh, $6,000. Wow. And I was, I was, I was getting paid, but I was, I was um, uh, getting, getting rid of it because I just started. So yeah, I was just like, ah, I don't really want it. Yeah. I didn't really want it. I was like, mm. so now I'm just like, I really regret selling my Bitcoin that I had at $6,000. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what year did you start getting paid in Bitcoin? Was this 2018? uh maybe 2019 no yeah 2019 or yeah 2019 maybe but it, yeah so it was around like six thousand dollars and wow i'm so stupid <laughs> yeah but you were still mad early like 2019 2018 yeah. there was not as much adoption as there is right now so you were in early and you know if you had any leftover sats you know you're still chilling you had a little bit of a bag but um, I really love how you really embraced Bitcoin from the start and, you know, self-sovereignty and all this good stuff. And you really meshed your new skills with the crypto skills. And do you do you know, um, you know, if you do you know if anything about NFTs or are you into NFTs at all? Because I know you've been in this space for a while and you're seeing how the space really progresses. Yeah, I think. Um... I do think NFTs are inevitable. Um, maybe not in the capacity that we're seeing right now, but I certainly think they are inevitable because everything is going mainstream. Yeah. And uh, within within the cryptocurrency industry, and everything is going digital. Yeah. Um, and I think you know, even with COVID, it's certainly been a catalyst in moving everything more digital. Right. Like meetings, the digital dates, the digital. Um, the way that we order food now is ridiculously digital. You know, like I went to a restaurant the other day and they, there was no waiter. I had to order on an app it, and the app didn't even work. It was bloody stupid. But anyway, um, you know, so everything is going digital. And to me, it makes sense that we would authenticate items on a blockchain. So like if we if we take it back to its like really core kind of 
you know, idea. I certainly see value in, let's say, like designer handbags, watches and things like that. Their value depends on its history and where it's come from. You know, if it comes from a certain country, despite it being the same item, it may be valued differently. And having that authenticated in a digital way is really powerful. And then you have, of course, you know, like just things which are inherently digital, like art. Um, how how is there not going to be value in that? Like how how is it not? And I think the only pushback to NFTs really comes from the Bitcoin maximalist community, um, mainly just because it's not built on Bitcoin, right? So like as soon as Bitcoin is able to, I don't know if there's like a second layer and they they build NFTs on top of it suddenly you'll see a lot more oh i'm quite interested in nfts on bitcoin still a bloody nft isn't it like it, the value and what it does is the same um so yeah i see value in nfts i just don't know which ones to buy i have a chill frog but um i don't really know what to do with that <laughs> yeah i was just gonna ask if you own any nfts so you own one yeah i own um i own a chill frog because <laughs> a bitcoin maxi gave me a chill frog um and I got an offer on it on OpenSea, um, but I, but I don't think I didn't get a notification that I got an offer. So I looked yesterday and I was like, it, the offer expired 12 days ago. So oh. I was like, oh, well, that's great. So I now I need to check daily. <laughs> oh, you don't get the emails when you get an offer? Oh, am I supposed to get an email? I mean, I get emails. Um, Maybe I didn't sign up properly. Yeah, that's Maybe weird. I didn't give them my email address. Maybe not. But yeah, if you, I'm sure if you, uh, if you go on OpenSea, just check every so often, you'll see like the latest offers and whatever, but they do expire, yeah. which is like such a, or sometimes cause you don't see mm. it and you know, it just passes you by, but at least you're in the game. You're, you know, you own an NFT. Do you see yourself ever buying NFTs or you're just gonna, you know, keep chilling? I'd only buy to trade, but then I don't really trade anyway. Um, so probably not although i'd never say never like the thing is i don't buy art like i don't really care for art it's not something that i've ever bought um you know that and that, and that could certainly change one day um when i move hopefully into a new apartment i will probably get some art to put on the walls but you know that's just like something that i see that's pretty and that's it, it it's i don't have like that cultured interest in art that people have um not necessarily that like NFTs at the moment, chill frogs are that cultured or whatever, but you know, it, it's just not really something that I've been that interested in, but to make money. Yeah. You know, if I knew which ones to trade, I certainly would. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. I know a lot of people who on Twitter have been, you know, buying NFTs and flipping them, but there are also yeah. a lot of, you know, good communities that come with a lot of these NFT projects. And there's a lot of like rewards you get if you're, if you own an NFT. So there's like a, a whole big space for this. And, you know, hopefully you do get involved soon enough and, you know, start stacking some NFTs. Um, Maybe after the show, if you want to get a wax address, I'll send you some NFTs from my wallet to get you started. But um, on the other hand, where do you see crypto going in like, let's say the next five years or so? Do you see a lot more mainstream adoption? Do you see pushback? What do you, what do you see? What's your vision? So, yeah, so um, certainly more mainstream adoption. Um, that's again, inevitable. To me, crypto and Bitcoin is inevitable. It's so obvious uh, and uh, you know, I tweeted about this yesterday and somebody was just like, what do you mean it's inevitable? I mean, obviously it's inevitable. We're here now, there's institutional backing. You think this is gonna just, do you think people are just gonna like give up and go away by choice? No, the more the government becomes more tyrannical, particularly with their CBDCs, the more we'll have a need for this um, kind of money. Um, there will be more pushback, of course. You know the infrastructure bill do you think you know that was done without any sort of like sinister motivation behind not clarifying that one word you know what does it mean yeah. to be a broker do you think that was done out of you know just pure ignorance obviously not um so i think there will be more pushback but i don't necessarily think that it will stop the um stop the movement um i do see a, a kind of like tug of war between the traditional system and the um and the bitcoin and cryptocurrency movement um but you see this kind of um but the way i look at it is like this uh tug of war goes great it goes beyond and i keep going back to this it goes beyond cryptocurrency and bitcoin it, it comes down to freedom and sovereignty and you know we've seen what's i don't know if you're following what's going on in australia there are like riots because of um, lockdowns and things like that and 
the, the more the government becomes more tyrannical, the more people are going to be pushing back and they have something like Bitcoin to fall back on. You know, when CBDCs are rolled out, which they will be, um, it will be very interesting to see whether our, you know, heart, like whether our paper cash will even be accepted anymore. Um, you know, that's one of the most private means of payment. Um, and whether that'll be accepted in one, it most certainly probably won't in some countries and most developing nations, it won't to get us all onto the CBDC. Um, so, so yeah, push back and tug of war. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yes, it does very nicely. I think that, you know, I do see a lot of your point and where, you know, there could be some pushback for, on the governmental side, but also a lot of adoption and people seeing that this is the future. I saw, I saw, I don't know if you saw this, there was this viral post that went out yesterday of people like lines and lines um, so long in El Salvador to get to a Bitcoin ATM. So it's really exciting to see that, you know, other countries are really picking this stuff up and pricing things in Satoshi's and, you know, whether, you know, Bitcoin goes up or down that day, you know, you're pretty much chilling because you're pricing things in Satoshi's. Um, but I want to get to your book as well, because I know <laughs> you're going to be there's a lot of adoption that you could be pushing with this book. So talk about your book a little bit. Why did you need it undressing Bitcoin? Like, what's the vibe? I love it. I love the cover. Do you? Thanks. Yes, it's so I thought sophisticated. It was like, thank you. My goal basically um, with my book um, and my goal with anything in life is just like, I think different works. Like I don't care if it, there's no right or wrong. I just, I don't want to do what everybody else has done. Like how am I going to become successful? Or how am I going to like? How am I going to build if I've done what everyone else has done? It doesn't make me stand out. And also, and also, you know, somebody said to me, "Why don't you call your book um, uh, how to secure your money before it's too late?" Ah, because it's too masculine and it's not me. You know, I want something different. Like people yes. bang on all the time. People bang on all the time. Oh, there's not enough women in crypto. I personally don't really care about that. But um, then don't don't get upset when I put a feminine touch on something. Um, you know. And I just, we're now moving into this new mainstream kind of narrative. And it's interesting because the people that I showed my front cover to and the title to outside of um, outside of the community weren't kind of like surprised or shocked. To them, it was just very normal. They were like, oh, cool. Whereas like everybody in, in the space is just like, <gasps> a woman on the front cover, you know? <laughs> I'm just like, uh, yeah, like, have you not seen books? yeah you know what i mean so so yeah so, so that's that um but what was what was the question ask me a question <laughs> what was the question <laughs> no you're all good i really like that you named it undressing bitcoin i think it has a really nice ring to it you know it just it that's just, what i mean like you're really just gonna break it down but in a classy way i i vibe with it 100 yeah. percent. but what do, what do you talk about in the book for people who yeah. haven't gotten to read it yet. And also guys, if you look in the description of this video, I did put the link to buy the book. Oh, thank you. That's of exciting. Course. I put all your okay. info. Oh, thank you. Okay, so basically, um, um, I'm not very good at promoting my book, so. Okay, right. So we've got, like a, we've got eight chapters, right? We've got eight chapters. And um, basically the first chapter is um, the problem with fiat currency. So it kind of just talks about, um, and it goes straight into it, by the way, the whole, like, it, it's a, it's a 78 page book, I think. Yeah, 78 page book. So it's tiny, you can see. Um, nice. But it's because it totally cu cuts the fat and gets to the point. So like the first paragraph, for example, is straight to it. It's talking about so you've probably told that if you work for the man all your life and you get a degree and you get a good job, you know, you can retire happily ever after. Well, that's not true. You know, so it gets straight to it. So it's the death of fiat currency in the beginning. Talk about inflation, quantitative easing, everything that happened with the pandemic. Um, and then we move on to understand the technicalities um, of Bitcoin, how it works, um, you know, from mining to proof of work, to the halving, um, to 10 minute block schedules, like the whole thing. Um, and then we move on to talking about how, how to actually secure it. Um, and then we move on to the more philosophy and the philosoph the philosophical side of things um, in terms of like decentralization. Talk about, you know, the whole scandal with Robin Hood and GME um, and I compare it to gold. I also talk about the humanitarian side of things um, in terms of like fleeing genocide and it being non-confiscatable. And so you can literally flee with the keys in your head. Um, I related to like Nazi Germany, for example, because um, in Nazi Germany, um, Nazis not just like only Nazis not only confiscated um, the physical possessions 
of everything that Jewish people had, but they even took the gold in their teeth. So, you know, <laughs> everything you have is gone, basically. So what they did was they, they wrapped gold in bread and they swallowed it so that the Nazis couldn't take any more of their most valuable possessions when they wanted to go and flee. Um, that kind of dehumanization wouldn't happen with Bitcoin. That's what I talk about in chapter four as well. Um, and then we move on and we, and we um, talk about, you know, FUD like energy consumption, um, El Salvador, the Lightning Network. And then my favorite chapter is the end, um, chapter eight CBDCs. So if anyone follows me, they'll know I have a very passionate distaste towards CBDCs. I've spoken about them already. Um, so that's chapter eight. Um, and so no, it, it, it's a great book. I love it a lot. I'm so happy that I, that I did it. I really wanted to have something that was mine. Again, it comes back to the idea of being sovereign over your wealth. So I wanted to have an asset which I could sell and make money, you know, from a business standpoint, I didn't want to have to rely on an employer, um, you know, to give me money. And, you know, I wanted to have something that, that I have that is mine and I own and I'm sovereign and in control of, um, of my wealth. It, it's really important for me. So, um, so yeah, and really, like I said, it cuts the fat, it breaks everything down in a really simplistic way. It's also quite funny at times um, and inflammatory at times, you know, talking about, I refer to um, the Federal Reserve as the enslavement machine. Um, so, you know, my dad actually said to me, Leia, the first chapter of your book, you know, it's good, but you should just be careful. It's a bit, you know, aggressive towards the system. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That was my point. <laughs> thank you, Dad. Thanks for picking up on that, Dad. <laughs> No, your books is stunningly relevant. Um, I love how you're talking about the recent events, the GME stuff, um, yeah. El Salvador. So you're talking about things that are going on right now, what people might be confused about right now. And it's not a lanky book. You said 78 to 80 pages, right? So that's that's a perfect amount. People, you know, especially Gen Z. Gen Z doesn't like to read long books, but if it's something short and simple and well broken down and right to the point, then it's going to hook so many more people. So I really love how you took care of that and you wrote it you know i re really love a book with your autograph on it link link you know <laughs> i'd love to get it to you if i if i knew how you know i was gonna get it i was gonna um the reason i did it on amazon was because um to do all the fulfillments which which means shipping and everything like that to do yeah. that myself to send it from the uk to america that will cost me 15 pounds mm -hmm. which is about what like 17 18 dollars um and then yeah just and then and then you'd have and then plus paying the company to print it so by the by the end of it i'd make no money on it and you know it's just impossible so yeah. if i did that then i'd be able to sign it but you know hopefully when i come to the states and meet you I'll, I'll give you a signed copy yes i would totally love to meet you when you come to the states speaking of coming to the states um you're coming you're gonna try to attempt to come here so it is, has that been a struggle to come here or do you know around when you would want to come yeah, so I'm hoping to come in the next few weeks. Um, my flights were initially cancelled, so it it was a struggle. But I rebooked them and I've managed to come a bit earlier. But it's like a a hop and a hop and a hop. You know, I've got to jump many different countries before I can get there. Um, America isn't letting in people from the UK at the moment. Um, you can't get in directly from the UK. You have to do two weeks in another country. So I'm going to do two weeks in another country, um, providing I can get there okay. And yeah, we'll just do one step at a time. But when I get there, I get there and. If it's meant to be, then I will arrive in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope you do. That's a lot. You have to go from your home to another country that you're probably unfamiliar with your surroundings for two weeks. And then you got to go to another just to go to another foreign country that you don't know where you are. So that's actually really fun and adventurous when you think about it. Yeah, I hope so. Um, that's a good spin. Um, <laughs> no, it should be. It should be. I just I, I'll need to. Um, just like organize myself and just, you know, really just take it step by step and day by day. And uh, I just need Wi-Fi and I need Wi-Fi, good food and a good gym. And then I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> just got to maintain your schedule. Stay fit. Stay fabulous. I feel you. I feel your vibe. I also saw you were in a predicament a few months ago. You were, you know, I felt so bad. I was like keeping up with you on social media. I was like, this girl is like homeless right now. What, what happened? Like you want to share with the audience what your crazy adventure was like? Yeah, so um, I plan to like spend a few months in Israel um, and 
the place that I'd um, arranged, because I'm organized, you know, I've arranged places. So the place that I arranged to stay and, you know, I put a deposit down and I, I paid a month's rent already. I paid a state agent, or re- a state agent fees, not a state agent, it's like a real estate agent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I paid all those fees and everything. Um, and when I get there, long story short, there's like, it's basically a construction site and it's impossible to live in and there's no Wi-Fi. I was supposed to interview the mayor of Miami, that obviously effed up because I had no Wi-Fi. Um, and so I had to leave ASAP because also like I hadn't eaten in like two days. I didn't eat in two days because also I was supposed to isolate um, because it was like in the heart of the lockdown back in April um, in, across Europe. So um, yeah, I had to isolate. I um, I couldn't unpack. The whole of the whole place where I was staying was unfurnished. Um, I was basically just like in a freezing cold construction site. I hadn't eaten in like two three days, and it was so loud. Like the drilling was so loud. I was going out of my mind i'm still here let me just hit my camera oh no um so yeah i was i was yeah I, I was going out of my mind and then and then i left going to an airbnb and the airbnb wasn't as listed so then i left there and um i had like five suitcases on me um and then i went from that airbnb to another place and i was finally like settled and i was like or right, i'll stay here for two weeks 10 o'clock at night and the um the owner tells me that um sorry my wife wants your room so he literally kicks me out so um, I, it was 10 o'clock at night, can't get an Airbnb, couldn't get a hotel because I wasn't vaccinated. So if you remember, um, Israel brought out all the vaccines much faster than the rest of the world. So everybody in their country was vaccinated. So, and obviously I wasn't. Um, so yeah, I couldn't get a hotel. So I was literally like homeless at 10 o'clock at night, crying, like literally going insane. Um, and yeah, the, the owner's wife looked at me and like couldn't give a fuck. Like she looked at me and... She just didn't care. Um, so there was a guy that worked at the at this apartment and he said, you can come stay with me. And I'm like, mm, I think I might be safer living on the streets. <laughs> and then he was like, and he was like, no, I live with my mom. I promise it's all okay. So I was like, all right. So he drove me to his, this random guy I just met. He drove me to his and I stayed with him and I showered and ate and his mom was very nice. And then, yeah, and then he took me around, um, he took me around Tel Aviv, which was the city I was staying in. Um, and we went from like Airbnb to Airbnb to check everything was good. And then, yeah, and then I stayed, stayed in a nice Airbnb for two weeks, no, for a month. And yeah, then I came home because it just, it wasn't as expected. Wow, what a journey. So you had, you had three failed attempts at a, I got place to stay before someone yeah. took you in. And what was that like staying with, you know, this this guy and his mom where, you know, was it, you know, very homey feeling? Because it sounds like, you know, they really just like, they're very caring people. And, you know, I you don't see that too often. Yeah, I mean, well, I'll tell you what, like I, I was at first I was a bit inco- uncomfortable because the truth is when I met the guy, he kept staring at my chest. And so I was just like a bit uncomfortable. Um, but then he could see that I was in a predicament, so he wasn't like being weird anymore with me. Um, but I, you know, I was uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but you know, his mum was there, so it was all right. Um, and it, it was really nice. It was very homely. Like you know, you get to like shower, and there's a mum there, and like yeah. they cooked for you, and like <laughs> they, they they cooked for me, and like they made me a really nice coffee, and like it was just nice to breathe. But I'm also a bit of a workaholic, so I couldn't work, which was really pissing me off. Um, you know, and I'd already lost that interview with the mayor of Miami because of the Wi-Fi. Um, so, but it was nice, but I, I kind of wanted to get out there ASAP. And then I, I remained friendly with the guy. Um, and then, do you, have you heard, do you know the Dead Sea? It's between Israel and Jordan. Do you know the Dead Sea? Yeah, I just have it. I just don't know what's around there. Okay, so it's between Israel and Jordan. It's basically like yeah. really famous because it's actually dead because there's so much salt in it um, and you can float. So um, he was like, we should go to the Dead Sea together. And I was like, yeah, yeah. So he took me to the Dead Sea, but you know, he wanted to spend the night and camp out. Yeah. And I was like, no, thank you. Let's just go for the day. So like, it was nice. And it was very nice to, for someone to like care for me. I'm in a foreign country and I'm homeless. Um, but at the same time, like you have to have your wits about you because like- exactly. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he wanted to be helpful, but a bit too helpful. <laughs> yeah, at least you got out of there and you, and you, you know, got safely to a place and then you eventually went back home, right? I did. Oh God, I missed the, oh, dude, I missed the worst bit. I ended up in a war zone. So then the war oh. broke out, the yeah, war broke that. out. Yeah, so the war broke out for the first time in 10 years, you know, 
the first time in 10 years the damn war breaks out and like there, there's always rockets going between gaza and israel but never really in tel aviv that's where i was that's like the touristic hub that's like the main place yeah. i guess imagine it's like times square of new york or something like that so like you never really get rockets there anyway the war breaks out and i'm just there at dinner at, oh and I, and I knew that they were coming okay so get this so i knew the rockets were coming at nine and i had a had a had a, a meeting actually had a call with eToro at 9 30 and i hadn't had dinner so i was like okay hmm, it's eight o'clock i've got i've got to have dinner i know i've got a rocket scheduled for nine and i've got a call at 9 30. hmm how are we gonna do this so i um yeah so i i did i mean do you know what i'm gonna i'll show you on my phone i was at dinner um in the heart of everything and then the rockets just started so let me see if i can get the video on my phone and there's music playing in the background right because like i said it's touristic so you've got music and everything so have a look wait, as the war is going on people are like yeah. wait you can't see it i see little dots floating is that the, are those the rockets oh you can't see it I you see can't it see it you bit. can only see the, the window there oh yeah oh my god that's insane wait wait look wait hang on can you see the rockets can you hear the thing as well yeah wow. that's insane and I love how so there's like, like classic music going on, like, you know, just chill out, vibe, eat your steak. And then like, you just got like rockets going over you. That's insane. Insane. It was, there was something like, okay, this is, this is really messed up. But there was something like magical yet frightening about it. Cause like the music was so like spiritual and you have like these rockets in the sky. And like, you also have to understand that like the war, a lot of war is to do with money, but like, this is also a religious war. So it's like, it, there's like this like godly power in the sky. I can't explain. It was, it was so bizarre. And then I went straight into a, a bomb shelter and then, and then to fly home, I also, I, I left the, I left my apartment at like one in the morning and then I went straight into a bomb shelter at the airport because as we were driving again the next night rockets started at like 11 until 11 at night until like four in the morning they'd start stop and start because it has to be done in the most torturous way right to interrupt your sleep and then you can't get back to sleep and then you're just there so um so yeah I get back to the I get to the airport and straight into a bomb shelter so it was bloody nuts <laughs> wow your journeys yeah. are very unique to say the least I, i'm happy you got out of there safely and you know you really got i mean at least you had the experience i guess a very a little bit of a scary one but you had the experience i heard tel aviv you know is very nice when there's not crazy things going on there so again i'm happy you got out of there and uh, hopefully you come to the states and you make it here and we get to meet in real life i feel like that would be so iconic you know like you know i ha we could bring your book like have it in, uh, in real life you know ah selfie with the book it'll be, so, <laughs> be, so, be so fun i would really love to meet you and more women in crypto and if you have a meetup you know let me know we could vibe and, you know, I wish you the best of luck on your book. I know you have somewhere to go in a little while. And, you know, I just really appreciate you coming on the show today. And thank you, everyone in the chat for joining. I really appreciate you guys. And if hopefully you guys claim some free NFTs. Um, but yeah, you're definitely a role model for me, Leia. And oh, I really, <laughs> I really hope you keep going in this space. And you're just like Queen Crypto because, you know, you really deserve to, you know, be a star and you know the newscaster you were meant to be and you know i'm really happy that we got to talk today and meet and vibe honestly so thank you for coming on the show yeah thank you so much for coming on and i think you know you're doing an amazing job yourself i can't believe you're can i say your age no i don't know yeah my yeah. last thing yes. yeah everyone knows i can't believe you're only 18 i don't know if you're only 18 i can't believe you're only 18 and you're like you're doing so much and you know i just think you're in the right place at the right time um, so yeah, major congrats to you. And it was such a pleasure coming on. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you so much. Again, you're really the best and you're such a role model for me. And thank you so much. Thank you to everyone in the chat. I hope everyone enjoyed this nice Wednesday morning special. Hope you guys had your nice cup of coffee for the day and you have a good one. Have a happy Wednesday, everyone. And of course, as always, stay zesty. Peace. 
Good morning, crypto Twitter. It's Missy Crypto spreading crypto. Adoption showing its benefits. Turn on my generation. Shout out.